G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Friday, the markets are still going down and we've now dropped down below 52,000. We're right down into the 50,000s. And I'm going to bring up a chart that we looked at a little while ago because it seems to be playing out true and you probably have forgotten it because I had half forgotten it uh, and we'll get to that shortly. But alright, market cap under 1.7 trillion, so now below 1.65 trillion dollars. So definitely continues to slide. BTC dominance 58%, ETH dominance 11%, and gas around about 111. And we can see again, there's a bit of a mixed bag here. I mean, you know, there's red and there's green in there. When we look over here, it looks very, very red. Um, but, you know, has anything really pumped in the last 24 hours? That'll be interesting. I'm sure there's going to be something that probably has. All right, seems there's quite a few things. So Theta Network uh, seems to be recovering quite well, even though there was some news that we'll have a look at shortly that the um, main net has been delayed. So that has caused a bit of a drop in the price, and we can see that replicated over here. Right, 38% for Anchor, Quantum, Pundi X continuing to rise, XRP, look out, continuing to rise, Holo, uh, Aave had a bit of a rise there, but it's still down. Neo, so some gains there, just nothing too major. Some, you know, some okay ones. Again, fifteen percent onwards is good. So good for Theta and good for Anchor. Everyone else, just maybe some average gains, but really, look, they're very they're low single digit gains. But for twenty four hours, no one's complaining. I mean, look at Dent, it's up again and it's up one hundred and eighty percent. File coin, file coin, sorry, continuing to do all right. So I'm glad. It took a really long time for that one to work out. All right, so some good gains. What about losses though? Polygon, there we go. It was always going to come back. So, yeah, if you're looking for a good entry point for Polygon, I'm not saying we're there just yet, but look, it's already down 26% from the last seven days. So it's all-time high. It's down 20% from it. So. You'll have to go and have a look at the charts and make your own mind up. But again, for me, I'm looking at basically most of these as good buying opportunities. I just don't know when the best buying opportunity is going to be. Again, I'd have to do some research, get on the charts and have a look. But none of these losses are really too bad over the last 24 hours. But we need to find out what might be happening with the markets. So let's go and have a look. So this is a chart that I bought up a while ago. So every March since back to 2013 has been a red month. March 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. March 19 was the only one that's been green because then uh, 20 red except for here. So this is where we are currently right now. Now, all that needs to happen is for Bitcoin to fall below about 40, let's have a look, about there. Really, it just needs to go below 46,000, sort of 45,500. And now that is quite possible that it does it over the next few days, and then it will be a, history will repeat itself, basically. It'll be a red candle. But what we can have a look at the marches is they're usually not that big. This one was a big dip. This one was a big dip, but this one, very small, very small, very small. This one was just kind of, a, a, you know, in between, not big, not small. And this one was very small. And again, that's just going back to 2013. So could history repeat itself? I think it's definitely possible at the moment because we have a look at some of the stories uh, that I'm going to show you. And I mean, look, this has just been such an amazing run that it probably wouldn't be, you know, bad if this retraced and again maybe came back down into the kind of low $40,000 range just a bit of consolidation so we can then go on the next leg but again we'll have to wait and see no one really knows it could just simply stay green and we continue to go up this could be just a small blip let's have a look at the daily chart again look at this the 50-day moving average it basically lines up perfectly at the moment with the uh, with where the red candles are the 50-day moving average and it's lining up perfectly with this downward trend here as well so what I'm really waiting for is over the next few days and particularly the weekend because that's where we're really gonna know is was this just a sell-off because of the options or again just a bit of a healthy correction 
and are we again, again sorry, going to find support off this 50-day moving average and then start to make our next move up? Very, very interesting times. And again, these are some of the key levels I'm looking for. You know, will it hold it around about sort of 50,000? A little bit under 50,000. Will uh, it find some support? Again, around here, 39, sort of 40,000. Or will it do it a little bit above 41,000, the 100-day moving average? Could this be one of those times where history repeats itself and it finds its way all the way down here to 20, sort of $8,000? and bounces off the 200 day moving average. I think with all the exuberance and things going on in the world, this is, you know, I won't say impossible because anything's possible, but nearly impossible that it comes down this far. I just think it'll get bought up way too quickly. And again, we'll get into some of the stories. All right, so first story, we'll start off with some kind of crap and FUD really. I mean, it's not so much FUD, but it's just a bit of crap. So Microsoft president says the world is best served when currencies are issued and backed by governments. I don't, you know, part of that, yes, I agree with, but a whole lot of it, no, I don't agree with. Look at so many places around the world when their money is backed by, where their money is backed by governments, and that's basically everywhere, and their systems are failing and crumbling. The government just simply don't understand money. They really don't. And when we are dictated by our governments, quite often money has failed. And, you know, it's not like this will be the first time governments have ever made a bad decision. They've made so many, it's not funny. Money, if anything, should be governed by the people. It should be a community consensus and the government just regulates it. But they should not, you know, kind of control it. And, you know, again, that means our money has, you have to trust your government and basically implicably as well. Again, you show me a government that hasn't made you know, major stuff ups and not always acted in the best interests of its people and I'll be happy to take that money on board. But outside of that, oh, I'd have to, yeah, strong, not strongly, but at least a 50-50 split. Half of me says, no, that's complete and utter rubbish. Another half of me says, well, we kind of do need something that's you know, somewhat controlled by... Uh, a government because we just can't have you know funny money out there that basically has no backing and anyone can just create but I do think private companies can create money and I think money should be governed by society not by governments so we can see here Microsoft President Brad Smith says that the world is best served when the currencies are issued backed and regulated by the governments regulated yes uh, Issued and back, not yeah, not so sure. He further emphasises that he is not a fan of encouraging the private sector to issue digital currencies, uh, unless the government came to Microsoft and said, "Can you do it for us?" And then I'm sure they'd be all over it and say, "Oh no, well things have changed now." So yeah, mixed emotions about this story, but uh, a lot of me tends to think that no, we need to have money that is separate from the government. Government should not uh, control money; they should regulate it absolutely but it shouldn't be controlled by them. All right, so a bit of perspective. So after setting a new all-time high of $61,699 on March 13th, Bitcoin dropped to 53,000 and now down to 51,000, uh, a decline of more than 14%. Again, that's 14% in 10 days, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not get too carried away with this. But however, following this latest drop, on-chain analyst, Willie Wu speculates that another institutional investor could be buying the dip. I think a ton of them are buying the dip. I don't think it's just one. All right, we go here. This is one that is buying, uh, is likely buying the dip and has been buying for a while. So my brothers and sisters from across the ditch over in New Zealand there, institutional uptake of BTC is on the rise. Kiwi Saver of New Zealand appears to have built uh, and ex built up exposure to Bitcoin in October. So they did it quite a while ago. So they'll be absolutely cheering at the moment. Kiwi Growth Saver Strategy, a $350 million retirement plan operated by New Zealand Wealth Funds Management, has reportedly allocated 5% of its assets to Bitcoin, underscoring the steady stream of institutional investors entering the digital asset. So again, Willy Woo says at least one. I think it's multiple. We go over here. Bank of America, now this is interesting for those who want to trade and those who want to simply 
uh, invest and hold. New research from the multinational investment bank confirms what many of us knew all along. Investors should never try, uh, try to time the market. When it comes to investing in the financial markets, panic selling often leads to missed opportunities and waiting for the dip could rob you of the most lucrative days to hold a particular asset. Using data going back to the 1930s, Bank of, Amer Bank of America strategists found that a basic hold strategy would have yielded returns of 17,000, nearly 18,000%. If on the other hand, investors tried to time the market, uh, they could have missed out on the best trading days, missing just 10 of the S&P 500's best trading days each decade would have diluted the total returns to just 28%. So there you go. Now this is to do with stocks and all the rest of it, but it's still much the same with cryptocurrencies. If you're lucky enough and you can time the market, yeah, you can do great, but simply by holding, you take advantage of all the best days and look, you take advantage of, you know, you, you suffer all the worst days as well. But again, you're still going to be up 17,000% by simply holding as opposed to trying to day trade and maybe only then getting 28%. So for me, I have a percentage of my crypto portfolio that I plan on selling and a certain percentage that I don't plan on selling. So I'm sort of, you know, 50-50. I may not get this full 17,000% that they're talking about, but, you know, I'll get more than the 28%. So I guess you could just find kind of half in there. That's my strategy. And again, I plan on taking some of the profits I make from cryptocurrencies and diversifying into other asset classes. So while one isn't performing well, hopefully the other is. But very, very interesting. It just goes to show that, yeah, investing is the much better method. Are there good traders out there who can outperform the market? Yes, there absolutely are, but they're far and few between and they're going to charge you a percentage to do so. Whereas you're going to get 17,000% simply by buying and holding. Interesting, food for thought. All right, now again, going back to Willy Woo's uh, story and he's saying he suspects at least one institutional investor is buying the dip. Well, New Zealand uh, superannuation firms or 401k as they call them over in the States and I don't know what else, uh, what they call them elsewhere. Uh, they have bought Bitcoin. Sovereign wealth funds may soon become the next major investment to enter the Bitcoin scene. I think they already are. State-owned investment funds are reportedly making inquiries into buying Bitcoin. According to Robert Gutman, CEO of New York Digital Investment Firm Group or NYDIG, the firm has been having conversations with sovereign wealth funds about possible Bitcoin investments. Rao Powell also confirmed Gutman's revelation, stating that Singapore's sovereign wealth fund, uh, Temasek, was indeed a Bitcoin investor. According to Powell, uh, Temasek, which holds about $306 billion in assets under management, has also been uh, buying virgin Bitcoin from miners. I think there's all this information that is going to come out much later. We're just not aware of it at the moment. So even while there's a dip happening at the moment, and as I've said before, I really do think it's the, the new money just simply gets shaken out. The smart money, they're just buying and they're holding. They're not selling, at least not in major amounts. Something else to keep in mind. So Bitcoin's Q1, the best one in eight years. Despite dumping nearly $10,000 in a few days, Bitcoin's price has still increased by 80% in the first quarter of this year. This makes the best performing Q1 in eight years and history shows that it could propel an even more impressive Q2. So again, I definitely think it's possible that this can turn into a red month. I don't think we're gonna have a major correction at the moment. We've just gone through these stories. There's, you know, Governments are looking at buying Bitcoin. We've had the best Q1. So is it possible that we have a bit of a retracement, maybe back down into the sort of mid to low 40,000s and then have this red candle march, which is statistically what we've had pretty much every year, bar one, since back to 2013 and maybe even prior to that. I think that's completely possible. As we spoke about Theta, so according to an announcement from the project, the development team needs more time to conduct a more thorough review and testing to ensure that the network will function effectively when it scales to over 100,000 elite edge nodes. So it has had a retracement, but we went back to here and Theta was still doing all right. 
So it's had a 30% retracement from there and it's already starting to correct. Whether it'll have a further retracement or not, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, Caitlin Long. So she is part of the uh, Avanti uh, sort of new crypto bank and it has raised 37 million ahead of crypto bank launch. So crypto bank Avanti raises 37 million from Series A investors as it prepares to take its digital banking operations online. So digital banking is now going to be a thing. Actual crypto banks, I think traditional banks will turn into crypto banks. There'll be a split of the two. In a press release, parent company Avanti Financial Group said Coinbase Ventures, Binance US, Morgan, Morgan Creek Digital, Slow Ventures and the University of Wyoming Foundation, among others, participated in the funding round. Avanti has raised $44 million in total. Avanti said it would put the funds towards meeting reg regulatory capital requirements and further invest uh, in its engineering team. So again, this news has been out for a while that there is a crypto bank, they've got the license, they're fully regulated, they're ready to go. Uh, and it seems like some pretty big names are putting some money into it. Morgan Creek, uh, Coinbase Ventures, Binance US. So this is the future, ladies and gentlemen. It is literally happening in front of your faces. So yes, we're having a bit of a correction. It is just that, it is a correction. We're not anywhere near the blow off top and ready to have these mass, you know, sort of sales. They're not coming for quite some time yet. In my personal opinion, never financial advice. Don't take that as financial advice, but that is my personal opinion. That's why I'm not panic selling at the moment. I mean, I don't panic sell really full stop. If I miss the uh, top of the cycle uh, and, you know, I've lost 50% of all my profits before I was able to sell, then so be it. I'll simply hold and I'll wait for the next bull run because I know after being through a cycle now that they eventually make that back and continue to go higher unless you just invested in a shit project. But even shit projects still generally bounce back as long as they haven't just completely died. They all of a sudden spring back to life uh, in the next bull market. So... Again, that's me. You got to do you. Don't simply do that just because that's what I'm doing. I'm sorry, not what I'm doing because I plan to sell this time. But if I do miss it and I'm just unlucky, then I'm just going to hold. That's all it is. I definitely won't be selling anything for a loss until we get to this time in the next bull cycle. And if it just hasn't performed and died, then I have to accept that loss. But I know that most of them will likely just simply perform again. All right, last but not least, US government. It's still got me stumped. I can't believe they're doing this. So US government sees cryptocurrency spring fever as great time to auction Bitcoin. They've got all this Bitcoin that they got from Silk Road and that, and they just continue to sell it. It's got me stumped. I don't know why they don't just simply hold it. So the press release uh, writers at the US government's general service administration are gushing about cryptocurrency spring fever. It, not, it might not be a coincidence that the agency plans to sell more than $300,000 worth of Bitcoin. So that's not a whole lot, but it's a little bit at an auction next week. According to an announcement posted Wednesday on the agency's website, the GSA is offering commission-free bidding on 6.79 Bitcoin divided into 10 lots. On Thursday, Bitcoin was changing hands around 50,800, so the total amount set for auction was roughly 345,000. The auction will take place at the GSA auctions website starting March 29 uh, at 5 p.m. So, yeah, I I would think they would just be holding on to Bitcoin now, but yeah, governments do strange and wonderful things and I guess they still don't really believe in Bitcoin and uh, there's money to be made and they'll probably put that money uh, towards, you know, actual mining of Bitcoin rather than holding it themselves. That wouldn't surprise me and I, I think that is something that the US government will likely get into and many other governments around the world as well. I really think that's uh, what they will do. They will be mining it and then they will be selling it to... Uh, yeah, the highest bidder. And, you know, I'm sure they'll hold some of it for themselves and they'll be selling it to their their own, uh, the people in their own country. And then it'll be them, you know, they'll be mining their own Bitcoin and selling it back to their public, which I, I don't think is bad unless they're, you know, absolutely gouging them. Then I do have an issue with that. All right, that's all the news stories. So again, for me, I'm not panic selling anything. 
Uh, I am just continuing to dollar average. I have a reasonable amount of cash sitting on the side that I, I'm not jumping into anything yet. If I see Bitcoin get down into the kind of mid to low 40,000s, I will definitely start to deploy some of that cash towards Bitcoin. If Ethereum gets down to sort of thirteen, twelve hundred dollars $1,200, I will be deploying some of that cash. But again, never all of it. I'm always going to deploy some and then wait and see if it goes even lower again. And then I'll deploy some, about 50% each time. 50% of what cash I have on hand every time it gets to a target that I think is a good buy until it gets to the bottom. And then that means I've always got money ready to buy. That's my strategy. You've got to work it out for yourself. All right, that's it from me. We've got the weekend coming. I think there's likely going to be more pain over the weekend. I do think we go low. I think we break down into the $40,000 mark. But I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. I am no oracle. I don't claim to know it all. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hit that like button down below if you enjoyed my content. I really do appreciate that. And leave a comment about anything. I'm happy to answer any sort of, I'll provide some insight, I should say, on what I can. All right, stay safe and I'll see you next time.